I want to talk about how to pray for the healing of others. Now, why make a video on how to pray for the healing of others? Because I think that when we approach God in the right way, he hears us. And it's very important because people suffer sicknesses of various kinds. And as Christians, we need to be equipped to pray for them. Okay, now one of the, the big issues around this is why doesn't God heal people all the time? Okay, and I'd like to suggest that rather than focusing on that issue, okay, and reasons why or why not, because we might just not know those, okay, but rather as Christians, we should set our hearts to pray for people and our attitude, the place we should be coming from, is a position of love for those people, okay? Even if they're our enemies, we could still pray for their healing because Jesus said, pray for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, okay? So it doesn't matter whether there's someone you like or someone that you don't like. As a Christian, Jesus is calling us to love other people and Jesus is calling us to pray that they might be healed, Okay, right. So what's the story around this? What do we do? Okay, right. So my um, suggestion about how we do this is that we pray based on the scriptures. Okay, and there's some scriptures that I believe the Holy Spirit's brought to my attention, which is why I've made this video. Okay, and one, the first scripture I'd like to bring up is Hebrews 11 verse 6. Okay, without faith, that is believing that God's there and that he will answer your prayers, okay, and that he will actually act and cause people to be healed, okay? That's the way you've got to be starting from if you're going to be praying for people to be healed, okay? Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him, okay? So when we come before God in prayer, what's going on is it's most important that we know what our heart space is, okay? Why are we praying for the person who's sick? Why are we praying that they might recover? And there's a couple of things that we ourselves, as people who are praying, are going to get out of this, okay? One is that we're believing God that he will heal them, okay? So that is the building of our faith, okay? We're trusting in God to act, because we've prayed, okay? Um, and prayer makes a difference, okay? It's certainly something that's prayer of a righteous man has great power in its effects. Is another scripture that springs to mind, okay? And then there is also James 5.15. The prayer of faith will save the sick person. The Lord will restore them to health, okay? And if they've committed sins, they will be forgiven, Okay? So we have some really strong scriptures to base our belief and our trust that if we pray that God will act and things might actually change, okay? Um, because even though I'm not even going to go into the whole predestination and predetermined thing here, but the point here is that when we pray, God listens and God answers prayer, okay? Okay. Um, the book of Hebrews has a, a long list of people who prayed by faith and trusted God and he acted. Okay, now if God doesn't act, does that mean it's all a, a void exercise and that God doesn't exist or that for some reason our prayers didn't work or that any other reason you can think of for why the person didn't get healed? Right, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay, that's not our concern. Our concern is for the person. Our concern is for those we're praying for. Um, our concern is that they would be healed. Okay, um, now if there are reasons why they don't get healed and that's beyond our knowledge, then that's we can go back to God in prayer and, and take things further in relation to God in terms of that. Okay, 
We don't have to assume negative things because we don't know, okay? So I'm going to suggest that our first position is one where we're trusting God, even though we don't know all the things that are going on in the situation. Okay, so we come before God, we're praying. Often it's a good idea to acknowledge God and follow Jesus' example in praying the Lord's Prayer. Father God in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth and in this situation that your will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily needs, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the glory and the power forever and ever. Okay, so we can start by approaching God with the Lord's Prayer. Okay, but after that, we... I'm a great fan of the idea of expressing where you're at to God, expressing your heart, not in a whinging way, okay, um, but to, to say, Lord, I don't know about the situation that I'm praying for. I mean, we have a prayer um, group at church, and um, if there's a need, everyone kicks in and we start praying for the, the people that are involved, and that's really good. If you've got the opportunity to participate in a group like that, I'd strongly encourage you to engage with that activity because praying, even if it's not something that you feel personally called to, okay, is a great way to engage with other Christians in a common cause, okay? Praying together with others is powerful in its effect. And also you get the opportunity to be engaged with others in a faith activity, okay? So it's really good um, and it will help build your faith and trust in, in God and take your relationship with God and use it as that opportunity to build your relationship with Jesus, okay? So you say, Lord, I know that there's this person I have to pray for, okay? I don't might not know very much about their situation at all, but Lord, I just want to lift them up to you, okay? As a priest, lift up the incense bowls with their prayers before the Lord and their prayers ascend to heaven. God hears our prayers, okay? So we can lift these people up to the Lord and their situation up to the Lord, okay? And we can ask him to intervene. We can ask him to heal them, okay? We might not understand all the things that are going on in the situation and say, Lord, I don't understand all the things that are going on here and I'm just going to wait upon you too, um, to hear back if there's anything specific about this situation you want to show me, I will then be responsive. I will respond to that and pray in accordance with that as well. Okay, so we just say, this is what I know, Lord, okay, um, and about the situation, and I'm just lifting this person up to you. You know the need here. You know that this person needs healing, and I pray that you would heal them, okay? So that's the straightforward bit asking God to heal that person, um, and then take it on from there. Say, okay, Lord, um, I've put my prayer to you, okay? You don't need to go on and on. God's not deaf. He's heard you the first time, okay? It's really important that I need to say it for myself because we, it seems very strange to us in the natural to be praying to an invisible God and trusting that he hears us. Now, if you've done receiving prayer um, and had a look at my other videos on receiving prayer, um, it's a really good idea then to just wait on God and ask him, Lord, do you want to show me anything more about this situation or how to pray for this person that I've, I've brought before you? Okay, and just see what comes. Okay, wait. If nothing comes, then that's fine. If something does come to inform your prayers, then pray, thank you, Lord, I've received this information, and then pray in accordance with that, okay? If you believe it's come from the Lord, okay? Um, and often there's there are signs and ways that you can recognise that. Maybe it has a certain gravity of meaning about it, okay? You, you just sense, yeah, okay, there's something more here than just stuff that's might have been made up in my head or things like that. There's a certain gravity about the response. And that's something else that I'll say is also present when I believe that I hear words from the Lord in terms of prophecy. Okay, there's a certain gravity and, and a feeling about 
what I think I've received and I say, mm, yeah, that's, I recognize that. Um, and that is something to get to know as well. Okay. Get to know, Lord, is that you speaking to me? Okay. Right. And after you've got the Lord, that feeling that the Lord has spoken to you, the Lord has responded. Okay. You can trust. Okay. Say, Lord, I'm open and available. If you want to talk to me some more about this issue. Okay. I do want to hear from you. I'm going to have a responsive attitude going forward. Okay. And then put it to God and leave it with him. Okay. That's trust. You don't need to, to keep banging on about it after you've already said to the Lord, Lord, I've lifted this up to you. I've made you aware of where I'm at and I'm praying for this person. Okay, I'm asking that you would step in, that you would act, okay? And God hears that. God understands and he listens to us when we pray, okay? Um, and I want to give that encouraging word to people uh, that, that God does want us to care about other people if they're sick. He wants us to pray, okay? He wants us to come in and pray against sickness, okay? Because we see it ravaging people all around us all the time, okay? Um, one thing I've got to say is that over the last year or two, we've just seems that we've had all kinds of incidents and, and things that have really required us as Christians to pick up our socks and actually start praying for people. Um, at this point, I'll give a plug for a previous video of mine that I think that deserves a lot more recognition than it's actually got. And that is the video on the four heart spaces of the disciple, okay? Um, prayer is certainly one way in which you can serve the Lord, okay? So if even if you think there aren't other ways, overt ways that you can serve Jesus, being a backup and being someone who prays for others is incredibly important. Okay, so um, I would encourage you to get into that. I myself, by engaging in this process of praying for the healing of others, have certainly got a new perspective on uh, the power of prayer and God's been showing me things. And that's the way it should be with our Christian life. We are being responsive to God. Our heart is being responsive to him. And he's teaching us and showing things to us by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's ministry is to teach us. The Bible says you have no need that anyone should teach you. Okay, that's because we have the Holy Spirit and he's always going to be showing us things. Okay, now, of course, we should exercise a little bit of care and caution. Okay, if we think that the Holy Spirit's shown us something, we should be endeavouring to see how that's the case, okay? So don't just accept any idea that comes to you and say, oh, that's from the Holy Spirit. Rather, exercise some wisdom and ask God to confirm it. Ask God to show you how it's so. Confirm it against the Bible and what the Bible says. And confirm it against others in wise counsel and talking to other believers, okay? That way, you're not just running off on your own tangent Okay, and making making all kinds of assertions or coming to all kinds of conclusions that may or might, may not be from the Lord. Okay, so it's very important that we back up our understandings the Holy Spirit gives us through the Bible and God showing us things and then things being confirmed as we live them out in our lives. Um, and it's very important that we do that in a somewhat humble manner okay, being ready to look to the Lord for instruction, not in a gullible manner, okay, not just swallowing everything, but looking to test and confirm things and to debate things, okay. There's all, all kinds of things around the issue of our, what our attitude should be to healing, okay. In general, I've got to say on that, our faith should be that God wants to heal us, okay. And if he doesn't, that doesn't mean that God's to blame either, Okay, because there's more going on in the situation than we can understand. All right, but having said that, our attitude should be a positive one, a belief and faith that God wants to heal people, okay, and that if we act and if we pray, there's going to be action and there's going to be things that happen that might cause someone to be healed. Okay, now 
also in relation to medical stuff, okay? Now, in former times, Pentecostals have gone off on tangents saying, oh, you should just believe God, you shouldn't seek medical attention. Well, that is just not biblical at all, okay? Um, many of the, the people of faith in the Bible were actually physicians, okay? The most notable I can think of being Luke, the person who wrote the book of Acts and the, the um, gospel of Luke, okay? He was purportedly a physician, okay? Um, so go and see a doctor for heaven's sake, okay? You're not making God illegitimate by that process, Okay, you're not making the healing power of God illegitimate by that process. God can heal through medical practice, okay, or God can assist a result in terms of medical practice, okay? So you're not going to offend God and you're not showing lack of faith if you go and get medical attention, okay? I've got to make that clear because it's something that's been hanging around okay, almost like a bad smell in Pentecostal circles, okay, it's really important that you do actually go with the current level of medical attention that is out there, okay, with discrimination, being still honouring to God, okay, it's, God is happy to work with medical professionals, just putting that out there, okay, um, you are not a medical practitioner, okay, um, that's great if you have faith to believe that God will heal you, okay, but you are the one who has to have that faith. And um, it does not mean that God does not heal using medical procedures and um, he's got to be a part of that. Why not have both medicine and God working together to make sure people are healed, okay? Putting that out there um, so that you can consider that in your believing and belief about this, that God is after what is good for people, okay? God is a good God and he is good to us and he is concerned about us, okay? Um, and that aligns with Jesus' teachings, okay? He cares about us much more than he cares about a lot of other aspects of creation, okay? All right, so I think I've probably... Um, expressed enough ideas to get you to think a little bit about this um, go and have a go at praying for the sick okay um, and build up your faith in God as you pray for the sick get to know Jesus okay when you're praying for sick people that's part of your relationship with God it should be okay if it's you, you, it's not God out there me here and the sick person over there and maybe something happens it should be you expressing yourself your readiness to be of service to god in prayer okay your readiness to bring this person before you god i don't know the situation here but i want to be involved with you in seeing you act in this situation okay that's part of the heart space that we should be coming from okay and put it to god i don't know what's going on here Lord, okay, I would just be speculating, okay? But you know what's going on here. And I pray that you would go in and you would act with your mighty power to see this person healed. Okay, so I'm just going to pray briefly um, and in this video. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are a God who loves us. And when you are on earth walking around as Jesus Christ, you performed the ministry of healing, that people came to you and they were healed. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would help us to grow in our understanding of how to pray for people, that they might be actually healed by your Holy Spirit. We pray that you would give us insight as we come before you and as we come to you to pray for others. We ask that you would help us to pray in a responsive manner, listening to you as well as speaking, and that we would be looking for the action of your Holy Spirit in different situations. And I just ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or things you'd like to discuss, please feel free to leave a comment below. 
and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.